Hey everyone, I'm Jean Freeman, and thanks so much for stopping by to listen to my chat. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is about my journey as an entrepreneur and talking about some of the things that I've learned along the way. Um, and I actually, how now is really a great time to start an agency, even when it seems like the sky is falling. So let's get into it. I'll start off by giving a little background on myself and also then just quickly going into entrepreneurship, things that I've learned, you know, kind of 101. And then really talking about this moment that we're in, this unprecedented time. Um, and sometimes in these moments where it seems bleak and there's not a lot of look forward, really great companies can come from that. In the last recession in 08, 09, uh, you know, Instagram, Venmo were all created during this time. So great things can happen in times of great turbulence. All right, so who is this lady? Who am I? Why do I have the, the reason to be here and talk to you about, uh, talk to you about entrepreneurship? Uh, I'm the principal, which means I'm the majority owner of VMBZ. We're a full service creative agent. We're a full service creative agency based in LA. We're a two time ad age small agency of the year winner and five time, five time um, on the Inc. 5000 list. And so from a recognition standpoint, I have won awards in the industry. Um, which is, and it's great to be acknowledged. I am very involved also in a lot of associations within the marketing industry, but it was in business organizations in general, entrepreneurs organization, young presidents organization, and the National Association of Women Business Owners. Uh, I'm very passionate about women entrepreneurs and ha helping women grow and scale their businesses. If you haven't checked out ZMBZ, here's just a sampling of our work. Um, we work primarily on consumer brands, um, but full service, and it's been a real um, joy to build this company over the last 14 years. So a lot of the questions we get is, you know, how our name came to be, and we, our, our name comes from the Zambezi shark. Here in the States, we call it a bull shark. Um, but in Africa, it's a Zambezi, and it's known for its resourcefulness and adaptability from going to salt water into fresh water. Um, I think that entrepreneurial spirit has always been within our company and also how we operate and um, with our business, with our clients. But I think it's also more apt today. The idea of adaptability, ad adaptability and resiliency are um, needed as companies are pivoting more uh, and faster than ever. And at our ethos, why we do we do it from a culture standpoint, and then also also for um, our for our, how we approach the work is the idea of taking bigger bites. Um, so much of marketing is skippable; um, consumers are avoiding it. So, really having the appropriate strategy, media, and storytelling is key, um, and working integrated as a team to do that. Okay, so that's enough about myself and my companies, let's get into agency entrepreneurship. I love this Mark Twain quote because sometimes the hardest thing is really just making the decision to start. Um, we want to have everything systemized and perfect, but sometimes the secret of getting ahead is just playing jazz and hitting go. So from a standpoint, we work a lot in brands. Um, helping brands articulate and identify who their customer is and the appropriate way to speak to them. Uh, I always encourage people, specifically if you're thinking about starting an agency or a company, to really kind of go to the why first. Um, I've learned over the years that this is the most important thing. And then you move to the what, and then you move to the how. Okay, so from a why perspective, I think if you look at it at the largest point, what would the world have lost if we, if we didn't exist as a company? 
And on the flip side of that, does the world really need another X? Does the world really need another agency, for instance? And why should the marketplace care? So it's really doing that full searching of figuring out what is really gonna make you unique um, and then how the product outputs are gonna be rep are how, gonna be a representation of that from market opportunity, your point of differentiation. You have to have a point of differentiation um, to start and to make it be a sustainable business. And then the how is really how you can move from a startup phase to really more of a sustainable business. What's the business model? What's the income from the inflow versus the expenses and the, out, and the outflow? And then employees. Um, you're gonna need people, uh, specialists, generalists, um, full-time, part-time, freelance, figuring out how that all is going to operate. And then from an overall process perspective, starting to map that out. So when you have all of this, this really comes together from a standpoint of communicating your why, your what, and your how. And again, a lot of times the why is saved for last. And as I've learned over the years, it's the most important thing. Um, it will be the backbone of your business and your culture. All right, so let's go a little bit deeper. If you're thinking of starting an agency, you're probably not doing it yourself. You're probably gonna be doing it with other partners and people that you know, you need on the team. If it's just going to be you, then you're, you know, you're, you're a solopreneur, which is fine. And really just, that's more of a one-off freelance perspective, but, you know, building a, an agency and a company is going to require in part, we're, we're crying partners. And really what that, one of the things that I think makes some of the agencies that have been successful is because those partners really are differentiated. They're differentiated in not only what they do, um, but it's also then they're very clear on who's making what decisions and who, who makes the final call on certain decisions. So that's always something to really think through when you're vetting things from a partner standpoint. If you're three copywriters and thinking about starting an agency that, that might not be um, a, a sustainable agency. And then of course, revenue. Um, we have from the standpoint like sales targets um, are the lifeblood of any sort of agency which requires new, you know, new business and have new business approach. Um, so it, oh, and from my experience too, owners and, and partners of agencies are the ones that sell the company or sell, sell the business in terms from a new business capacity. So I would continue to have you talk about your team of like who's gonna be responsible for new business because it's a huge job. Um, and then, our, it's one of the reasons bankers are so mystified by the advertising business is because the targets are so volatile. There's not a lot of reoccurring revenue. Um, so making sure that we're, someone's really in charge of targets uh, in terms of forecasts, and I'll show you an example of a model later on, and as well as cash flow. You know, cash flow is a lifeblood of any company, um, and really making sure that that's being mitigated and, and managed properly. All right, so let's go into a little bit of like, how does an agency make money? So from a finance overview, <clears throat> revenue coming in is, you know, fees that we have for uh, staff. Um, we have, if you're a production company, then you've got fees from a production standpoint. Uh, if you're a media agency, you're either doing it on commission or you're basing it on staff time. So those are really kind of the revenue opportunities that can come in. And then in terms of cost, Cost of goods are really passed through cost. Um, they're not, they're, they're not, whether it's an external production company, uh, a network, you're just acting as the bank and the go through. Direct cost, sales, uh, I mean, salary and payroll tax. I mean, we are a, we are a people intensive business, so it's majority of where uh, uh, costs go to. And then overhead for everything else, for offices, uh, entertainment, business, um, and of course, snacks. So the, a lot of how pricing is done within um, an agency structure is by FTE, full-time equivalent. And so really what's up with this FTE thing? Like, is this the only way to do it? It's not the only way to do it, but I thought I'd just go through um, an easy to understand way of how fees are calculated and to give you more context of maybe of how your agency is running and how um, you know, your role is being priced. 
So on, on the left, you have just overall, just the, you know, just the, the walkthrough of that. And then on the right, it's put directly to um, some specifics. So if you have a, a person who's working on a piece of business, say their salary is 100,000. Um, this client is wanting 100% of them. So that's 100% allocation, FTE, full-time equivalent. You have an overhead multiplier, which can vary quarter to quarter. We look at it on a quarterly basis because it's, it's everything else. It's all those ancillary things, office, computer, snacks. And then and including a 20% profit margin on that um, because we want to continue to make profits to reinvest in the business, make the business more sustainable. So if you kind of look at that through this example, again, this is hypothetical. This is just to kind of show you how it works. You have a salary of 100,000 that's being billed out to a client at 222 for the year. And this is a hypothetical example then of all of, all of the staff levels that are then put into uh, a fee that would be presented to a client. So this is how FTEs are calculated. They're calculated by um, title. But you know, FTEs is not the only way to, to do it. You know, a price of an agency fee should be based on the value of their service rather than the agency's cost structure. You know, one of the famous examples is the Citibank logo. Um, it actually took the designer like 10 minutes to draw it and she did and but from a standpoint if the chart if you're charging based on time as opposed to what this long-term value is to the organization those could be two different types of conversations um i will say for larger uh I would say fortune 500 companies procurement is usually part of the process with onboarding any sort of agency and so ftes help validate uh the cost structure uh behind it so this is an example of a forecast model, and this is something that changes uh, weekly, if not daily, uh, to kind of show this is revenue coming in that's confirmed, because um, a lot of times we have, you know, if you have retainer pieces of business, uh, projects that are solidified, you're forecasting for things coming in, and then from an operating expenses, those are weaved into this model, and it can help be used from a standpoint of how we're tracking. So from this example, at the end of the year, showing $156,000 net profit. Hey, for a company that's just kind of getting up and running, that's awesome. So again, this helps give direction on where uh, time and energy needs to be put, more on the revenue side or more on the expense, expense management side. So a common question that I normally get is, well, how do you start the funding to start an agency? And the truth is, we're not, a, it's not very common to be funded. Um, per se through, you know, whether it's private equity, VCs is pretty much non-existent in our, in our industry. A lot of agencies start with, they have some day one revenue. So whether it's an existing, whether it's an old client that has reached out on um, starting, I will all say, if you are thinking about starting an agency with any of your current clients at your company, um, you need to put, check your non-compete, non-solicitation um, agreements that you've signed. Usually there is a one year um, period where you, you, you can't work on any existing clients for that, for that piece of business. But, you know, there are different ways um, to do it bootstrapped. Again, it's like you're just you're spending less than you're making. It's pretty simple. And that's how we've really grown our business is by just being very responsible and very fiscally conservative. And then you have a lot of, you know, there's emergence of, you know, new era holding companies. They're smaller, they're more nimble, they're willing to invest in, you know, specific types of talent. Um, so holding companies like Dawn or Project Worldwide, like there are more of these. It's not not just only the big guys. Okay, so advice. What I've learned. So, um, you know, we have a, a great way, and we're also guilty of this in this industry of, you know, aggrandizing how glorious and wonderful it is to to run an to run an agency and to to be an entrepreneur. But I can I I'm here to tell you that it's like it's pretty much the fire festival. Um, it is you're figuring it out um, and hopefully it doesn't end in being convicted of fraud <laughs> in that standpoint and also state startups are total chaos um, if you've only been in a really large organization my advice to you is try to get some exposure to a smaller company to see how they work because they have completely different types of cadence um, again it's going more from that generalist to a specialist and it can it can kind of show you what type of environment 
you know, you thrive in. And then mistakes, you know, be prepared for lots of mistakes. Um, you know, most of us have had pretty linear career paths and, you know, up and up and up and um, with, 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 with new companies and startups, it just it doesn't operate like that. Um, you really have to embrace a different type of mindset that you're expecting mistakes and you know that they're going to come because they actually come on an hourly basis and through the time that you have and you just, you, you know more and it, bec and it becomes more of, you know, you know how to operate in that. And I love this Bill Gurley quote, where good judgment comes from experience, which comes from bad judgment. And also be prepared for pivots. I know it's, this is a pretty general thing, but if you really think about it, it's a fundamental aspect. Netflix was a mail to your house DVD company. Like DVDs and the USPS doesn't even like exist anymore. So that's the thing that I find so fascinating about Netflix is they have continued to reinvent themselves and they've always come out stronger and better. And the reality is 75% of startups don't make it past year three. And they make it past year three for a few reasons because they don't either pivot quick enough or they run out of cash. So that's why this idea of pivoting is so critical. And then I end with this because I think, you know, success can look like a lot of different things. Um, and I think you have, to you have to define what success means to you. Does it mean you want to continue to work in advertising, but you're just sick of the you know, big agency grind, so you want to do it on your own terms, more, more of a work-life balance? Or do you want to really create the next droga and have huge, massive growth? Or do you want to have control and really just be in charge and close to the creative decisions and really have that? All three of these options are correct. So I think it's really figuring out what is the best option for you. And the thing I always love to tell people is that you will be successful. Maybe it's the first go around, maybe not, the, maybe that wasn't your shining moment, but you will be successful. Um, and when you do, to never forget your humble beginnings. We have this hanging in our office um, and I, I love it from humble beginnings come great things. So we are in unprecedented times. So why right now? Here's the reality. We're all virtual agencies. Like there is no advantage that a large agency has over a small agency right now, as opposed to maybe certain types of talent levels. But I mean, we're all pitching from like our kitchen tables. Um, the playing, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's different. And also our clients are going through the same thing too. You know, they're like really evaluating what kind of checklists they had. Maybe it didn't make sense. It's like, you know, why do they need to have a West Coast only agency? Maybe that type of thing you throw out the door. So everything is virtual and everything is changing. And you can r r radically reimagine how an agency can deliver solutions. Big agencies can't, they just can't move quick enough. Um, so, you know, remember when we talked about like day one revenue? Like if you can start an agency and have a project, you know, that's about say 250 to 300 K that can sustain you. That's, that's something that you can like start to build a business on. So I, I also think about it from that standpoint of now is a time you can start very nimbly and very small. Big agencies can't do that. And you can price yourself to win. Um, you know how they have the thing of it's the you know, good, fast or cheap pick two. Um, you can do all three because uh, you're definitely going to win on price. Uh, it's really then I, it's really concentrating on the craft and making sure that the work is great because if your work is great, the portfolio will, will grow. So that's the other thing that I always tell people um, to really focus on. Your costs are always going to be less just because you're scrappy and you're new, but you have to have the work. You have to have top line work. And the age of gig talent will continue, which, which, which will provide you such infrastructure that can be yours in a minute. So, you know, with companies like We Are Rosie, who has 10,000 freelancers on speed dial ready to go, um, you can use companies like this that can really expand your infrastructure so quickly. Uh, so there's a lot of things of how you can do and, and go into areas of business that you might not have been able to, to do a few years ago. You don't have to necessarily build it all. Um, it's there for you to, you know, plug into. And big clients are looking for nimble partners with a specific focus. And again, I'll, I'll 
hammer this a little bit. Focus, focus, focus. This is what will allow you to have a specific niche and, and reason to be um, and have it grow from there. And the playing field has never been flatter. Um, it's such an interesting time. And it's an interesting time for those of uh, for for those that want to take the risk and want to try it out. Um, there's so much fluidity that's happening in the marketplace right now, which means there's also a lot of opportunity. And I'll end with this: you know, entrepreneurs are willing to do what others won't do for a few years, so they can have what others can't have for the rest of their lives. Entrepreneurship. Again, it goes back to that larger thing of success. What are, what are you in it for? Um, and that success can have a lot of different things, but it can also be really life-fulfilling and life-changing uh, in so many ways. Um, one of the things that my experience has taught me is I love helping women grow their businesses. I help women, uh, help them understand getting connected with the right types of accountants and lawyers and, and setting them up so they can manage their own destiny and wealth and health as they, as they move into um, building their business. So, and with that, I'll leave it for questions. If you have any questions or comments, um, my email's here, gene at dmbz.com, also available for Therapy avails because I know a lot of the, the bumpy road that, um, you know, agency owners go through. So just know that I'm here. Um, thanks for listening to my chat. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much for your support of 3%, um, which is an awesome movement and organization um, that our industry has desperately needed for so long. So, so thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it.